What if he could lose a week's worth of fat in one day, one singular day? Theoretically, why it's important to be using this compound or chemical only for two weeks to three weeks if you're going to decide to use it in the first place. DNP is supposed to be protein sparing, which is like music to my ears because it can now be said that dinitrophenol is of definite value as a drug for treating obesity, and perhaps some other metabolic disorders. This is the reason why T3 and T4 are going to be low because TSH is going to be high, that bumps up T4, that bumps up T3. Okay, so here are my notes for DNP. <clears throat> Reading about a study about a dosage, no liver damage, no kidney damage. Therapeutic values used were between 100 to 600 milligrams for two to 50 weeks with an average being 19 weeks. So this was this study. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm basically just gonna read out the summary for you instead of the whole thing. It can now be said that dinitrophenol is of definite value as a drug for treating obesity, perhaps some other metabolic disorders. In the hands of the medical profession, it can be used with the maximum benefit and with minimum deleterious results. Now, medical profession or not, basically in the hands of someone that has some common sense and logic and isn't a complete moron. <laughs> That's basically what the point of that is. Okay, so that is that part of, of using DN, oh, sorry, of um, understanding, what kind of damage it does or it doesn't do. I mentioned the 11% BMR thing. One of the other things I want you to know is um, this is something that I found out only after using it after the first time because the first time that I used it, I absolutely did lose fat, but the sec but I lost fat without losing too much weighing weight on the scale. And since it was my first time, I didn't know what I was doing right versus wrong and so on and so forth. What I realized later on was because your metabolism boosts up by so incredibly high, which is like, what, 30%, 33% if you're doing 300 milligrams, 400 milligrams, depends. So if your metabolism boosts up, boosts up by 30% to 40%, your your body auto-regulates and tries to, goes back, tries to go back into homeostasis by reducing your thyroid uh, function in, in the body and trying to reduce T3 so that your metabolism comes back down again to, in order to try and establish homeostasis. So I have a study that kind of uh, shows you that as well. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I pulled it up. It's here. Inhibitory effects of certain drugs on thyroid hormone binding by human liver cytosol. And the first one that it mentions is DNP uh, amongst a bunch of others. But my point with that is, if you actually use DNP, let's say after day four, five, six, seven, something of that sort, within the first week or so, your thyroid will reduce by itself. And in order for you to keep on losing fat effectively with DNP, if you're using it, you want your thyroid function to come back again, which requires you to supplement it with to a, a HRT, TRT, uh, HRT levels replacement therapy levels of uh, t3 which would be 12.5 mcgs or maximum 25 mcgs because you will still be so so the so the human body naturally produces 25 micrograms of t3 um t3 is the active functioning part of it by the way i just want to give you like a mini class t3 is the active functioning part t4 is the inactive part that converts to t3 tsh is the thyroid stimulating hormone that tells you tells the body how much of t4 and t3 to make so tsh is going to end up making t4 which is going to convert to t3 so that's how T3 and T4 and everything else work. T3 is the one that's going to reduce. And T3 is produced at 25 micrograms uh, inside the body naturally. And if you're, if it's going to get reduced, then you probably want to supplement it with only 12.5 because it will still be producing a certain amount by itself. Another side note that I'm just going to mention, thyroid functioning, thyroid is in uh, thyroid is actually, so everything to do with thyroid uh, hormone is way more important than everything to do with your testosterone and, and HPTA access uh, completely. It's, it's way more important, way more useful. One of the good things, however, is even people that have been supplementing with the thyroid hormone for 10 years can come back out of it and the thyroid can kick back easily again. I have my own blood test and I'm going to show you towards the end of this video to kind of show you my results with both thyroid, DNPs, liver, kidney functioning, every, everything else as well. So, T3 reduction happens after four, five, six, seven days. That's when you want to incorporate something. That's when you want to incorporate T3 in itself so that your, your DMP is still functioning at its max range, at its max efficiency, right? One of the other things about DMP is it's a good repartitioning agent. The reason why it's a good repartitioning agent is you're burning way more calories and fat 
you're burning way more calories, you're burning way more fat, so there's more free fatty acid, FFA, free fatty acid uh, mobilization going on. If all that is happening, your insulin sensitivity is going to go up. If your insulin sensitivity starts going up, that is literally what the repartitioning agent is. So when people use clenbuterol or alpha lipoic acid or anything that's a repartitioning agent, it's doing the exact same thing, which is it is, it is increasing or improving your insulin sensitivity to start putting more nutrients more towards your muscle tissue as opposed to any other tissue or even fat tissue, right? So it's a repartitioning agent as well. I mentioned the two to three weeks where the metabolism adapts. Okay, the DNP dosing graph. Now, this one is really important because um, most people that when when they... Here's the simplest thing. Most people are morons. That's that's the whole point. Most people are morons and that's why in order to make the entire world moron or stupid proof, that's why most people cannot do a bunch of different things because the morons kind of ruin it for everyone else. So... Um, well, my what what is the what is the point of this entire rant is pretty much this graph actually i don't know if you can see this uh hopefully you can but let's see so this is the graph that's that's generally shown on different pages and so on and so forth and it is really important to know this graph all right coming back once again so dnp half-life is is said to be 36 hours to up to five days the reasoning for that is this is where people go full retard. It's like if, if one if one if I take one cap of something and it gives me this this this, obviously if I take four caps of it, it's gonna give me that much, which it will. But the whole point of the the biggest side effect, the side effect which is why it is so hated or scared or fear mongered or you know just beat down upon, is because the side effect is basically hyperthermia that can lead to death. You will cook yourself. That's how you they kind of say they put it. You will cook yourself from the inside, which is basically your 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 body will heat up from the inside and you can die. Now the reason why that happens is because people dose it in the wrong way. So I'm going to show you what dosing kind of looks like. If you're taking 400 mill, so first of all, almost nobody really should be taking 400 milligrams. This is from someone that that has dreamt about a 400 450 milligram uh, run, which I will get into later on. But you want to start off obviously with 100 milligrams or so. In this example, you're taking 400 milligrams. So if you take 400 milligrams, the second day when you take 400 milligrams again, you don't have like, uh, how much is it? Uh, you don't have 400 just the second day. You have 625 because you still have this much of it left. On the third day, you take 400 again. You don't just have 400. You have the, the addition of the first one and the second one, which goes up to 800. So the next, so on Wednesday, the second, the third day that you're taking uh, the same 400 milligram dose, you're actually effectively at 800 milligrams at that point in time. And then so on and so forth until Friday, Saturday, Saturday, Sunday, and then you come back to Monday once again. Here's where basically the fifth day is, is when you're asked to up your dose or recommended to up your dose if you're going to up your dose because this is where it has stabilized to like one of the highest levels that it's going to be at. So if you're taking a 400 milligram dosage here, then it's going to be a, a little bit above a thousand milligrams. And that's where it's going to stay pretty much after that. So if you want to bump up, then you bump up after the fourth or the fifth day and never before that. And that's where people end up getting side effects and causing issues pretty much. So that's the dosing of DNP and how it actually functions. Once you're done with it, again, it takes a while for DNP to completely leave your system. So it's gonna take like a complete week or so. Yeah, it's gonna take like a complete week for it to actually go back down close to zero once again, as you can see from this graph. So that's the part about DNP and dosing, right? And why it's it's so hated upon because the half-life is so long. Now, before I go into like personal side effects or so on and so forth and my personal effects, uh, I already read that study out for you guys. I already read this study out for you guys. Uh, let me see if there's absolutely anything else that I kind of need to go through. Uh, there are my own studies and so on. Okay. I believe... All right. Um, well, actually, you know what? No, I'm going to leave the I'm going to leave the the studies and the inference of the studies towards the end. So let me kind of take you through. <clears throat> if you actually had a dream on DMP, this is only from a user because nobody else would actually know how this actually functions. But uh, what it actually feels like is as if you have a low grade fever, because that is that's kind of what you actually do have. Uh, a fever is basically where your body temperature goes up. Your internal uh, body temperature is going up and your metabolism goes up. That's literally what DNP does to you. Your body temperature is going up from the inside. So it does literally feel like you have like a low-grade fever. Is it possible to function with a low-grade fever? Yes, we do. We always function with a low-grade fever. Like it's not, it's not the end of the world or anything. This is one of the side effects that's always overstated. Oh, I feel like death. Oh, I feel so tired. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Do you feel that? You absolutely do feel that. But to be extremely honest, you don't feel that on the run, on the cycle. You feel it after you're done with it and then you come back off and then you realize, holy shit, wow, I feel so much better now. So that's actually how you feel. It's, it's really weird to explain, which is also the reason why you can actually get through it because while you're on, 
you're feeling tired and so on and so forth, but you're not feeling like you're dead, dead. Like I actually felt literally dead when I was doing my, my prep, uh, my last prep, because that was purely because of food. So it's really not as bad as people actually uh, make it out to be. Do you feel good? You feel really good once you're done and you completely come back out of it. Um, so it's the low grade fever thing. <clears throat> the highest doses that I've actually, uh, my first run ever <clears throat> was 100 megs every alternate day, 100 megs every alternate day, and so on and so forth, because obviously it was the first time I was doing something, I was really scared. The second, and that was the one that I did not lose, a, I lost a bunch of fat, but I didn't lose a bunch of weight on the scale. Second time and so on and so forth, once again, 100 megs, 100 megs every day, every day, every day, and then I bumped up to 200 on the fifth day, and then so on and so forth. After that, I basically did 200, 200, 200, 200, 200 for my third run or so. Um, the highest that I've ever taken in a single day has been 450 megs. 450 megs, I was basically burning up, I was sweating pretty much all the time the entire day. Um, if I, I was, I was pretty hot and tired uh, at 450 megs, but the best part was like, as soon as food came in and there was any amount of carbohydrates in the food, as soon as I started eating the food, I started sweating. Like, I, I feel like I even started sweating even when I was eating like protein and such. Like, I know that carbohydrates is when it bumps up and in and um it's it's supposed to make you sweat because you're actually burning through the carbs that quick but i think even at uh, on 450 i think i started b burning up a sweat really really bad um 450 was not doable for me I, I moved back down to 400 i used the 400 until the end of the run and that was good i will give you the exact stats of my entire run as well <clears throat> after after which i'll go into my blood test once again so for, I've actually done 400 megs in the summer in India. And the way that I managed to run it was, it wasn't actually that bad while I was moving around outside. <clears throat> but, uh, and when you're at home, you have uh, a, the air conditioner on. So it's really not that bad if you're always standing in front of the air conditioner. I've also run it here once here uh, in Canada in the winters and, um, or dreamt about it at least. And this was again in the smack dab in the middle of the winter. And it was cold as it's cold as shit and everybody else was like double triple layered and i was basically walking around without without a shirt on <laughs> with both of my windows down my my room was completely freezing i didn't have any friends over in my room ever because they were always complaining so that was basically how it, it went over here um besides that this is the best tip that i can actually give you which nobody else ever actually mentions um when you're gonna sleep you are going to soak the fucking ever loving shit out of your bed sheets and your pillows that is 100 percent going to happen and the way that you fix that is by and i actually remember this because i couldn't sleep for the first four five six seven days and the way that i fixed it was basically i put a towel underneath literally my entire body underneath where i was sleeping uh the upper body that's where you actually sweat and uh and also like a towel underneath my head uh for the back of my head sweat on the pillow <laughs> fucking beautiful did not feel a single thing until the next day the next day you wake up grab the uh, towels put them in another uh, uh, switch them with the other one for the next night and then throw them in the in the laundry and you're good so that basically made sleep like the best thing ever because if you didn't do that your sheets would get soaked and then you could not sleep in them like you cannot sleep on wet sheets but you can however manage to sleep on wet towels i don't know what it is is it they're fluffy and I, I don't know what it is Besides that, <clears throat> um, energy and downsides I already mentioned, people just complain for no reason. If you don't really feel down or low energy during while on it. Uh, if you, if anything, you actually feel really, really good when you come back off of it. So that's one of those things. Antihistamine. <clears throat> an antihistamine or basically an anti-allergic. This is really important because um, I believe DMP is also used as like an anti insect repellent kind of thing in for, for fertilizers and so on and so forth um and one of the things is basically it can give you like a kind of a rash um and i forget exactly what the kind of rash is but i did end up getting that rash thing maybe once maybe twice and if it's ever happened the second you take the antihistamine pretty like in a couple of hours or maybe the day it clears out and you're good besides that there's a bunch of okay so there's so many vitamins minerals antioxidants and the most important one um, the most important thing is actually the, the electrolytes because you're, you're sweating so much, you're losing so much water that you're going to be sweating out your salts and your electrolytes. In order to replenish those, you can't just keep on drinking water. But the best solution for that, I have a, I have a list of all of these things. Hit me up in my DMs, uh, hop on for like a consult or something. I'll give you my entire log. I'll give you every single uh, one of these vitamins and macros and minerals and, and the, and the solution, the cheapest solution instead of trying to get Gatorade and Powerade and all that shit, I'll give you the best, give you the best solution for all of these things. And, um, you can read through them because this is only for educational content, of course. Besides that, let's actually get into the results. <clears throat> I did show you the results. Let me actually take you through the logs to kind of hopefully show you what the results here are. Feb, 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 that was a Feb one. Okay. 
What? Where did my May one go? There's no way. Okay. Oh, is that the one? That's the one. That's the one. That's the one. Okay. I do believe. So 200 megs daily from the start. First day is Monday night. This is the 2nd of May, 2017. That's when I started off. Start T3 in about four to five days. So I started off T3 in about four to five days. 25 meg MCG of T3. First week deload. Okay. I deloaded training as well because I didn't want to like hurt myself too bad or anything. Uh, cut was good. So it, let, let me just kind of give you just the numbers where we started off from and where we ended up. I, I'm kind of trying to remember this. 8th May, I remained at 88.7 kilos. I wonder how much I was before that. I wish I had it written somewhere, but I don't. So 88.7 kilos, I guess, is the highest that we can see to start off with. I've also mentioned this thing before to you guys, but the basement metabolic, uh, oh, calories were actually 3,000, 3,300. So that's good. Um, yeah, so 88.7 kilos to start off with, and let's just go straight to the end. And ended the cut somewhere at 83.8 eight kilos 84.1 kilos 83.8 kilos that was the 19th of may so again two weeks no more than any two weeks and then after two weeks after that i believe uh we're at 28th of may it was 84.9 kilos or something um so what did we start off with 88 or something and then went down to 83 so that's like 10 pounds in two weeks i believe so like I mentioned before, it's like you're dropping like a pound, uh, a pound a day or something. Um, similar to that, basically, okay, we're making fantastic progress. T3, T4, T3, T4, TSH all came back to normal within a weekish. Max ten days. Didn't even feel the slightest bit of T3. Uh, suppressed T3 when we came off core turkey off of T3. The results for these are right now. Okay, thirteen five. So right in the in the middle of my cycle. So I took uh, an FSH LH uh, th um, uh, test as well. I don't know why I did that, but. This, uh, the TSH at 0 0.191, I'm going to let, let you guess, why do you think the TSH is low? <clears throat> TSH is low because I was supplementing with T3, which is why my thyroid stimulating hormone inside my body basically reduced. Testosterone is fine, that doesn't make a difference. Uh, estradiol is also fine, doesn't matter. T3 is in range, but T3 and T4, uh, T, uh, TSH and T4 will both be low. As I mentioned before, because you're supplementing with T3, which otherwise goes down, this is the reason why T3 and T4 are going to be low, because TSH is going to be high, that bumps up T4, that bumps up T3. So if you're supplementing with T3, this is how it's going to look. And immediately after that, I was done with my run 29.5, Liver panel completely clean. Um, estradiol is totally fine. T3, T4, TSH, everything bounced back. I'm actually kind of surprised because it, was, uh, it seemed to only have my liver panel in here. But yes, everything was basically fine. I also took like a kidney function test after this. Liver function test fine. Kidney function test fine. T3, T4, TSH fine. Uh, test everything else fine. Basically, everything was good. So... These are the results on a on a DNP run. You've seen the before and afters. You've seen how this thing functions. Oh, I forgot one of the most important things. I forgot one of the most important things. One of the most important things is if you do overdose and, and end up <laughs> heating up from the inside, obviously make an instant run to the emergency room. And uh, the only compound that we know of so far that can reduce hyperthermia or negate hyperthermia or begin to do so is a compound called as dantrolene. It took me forever to try and find something that could actually possibly fix it. And this was one of the other reasons why DNP is so hated because there's no fix for it. And again, this is not a... This is not a guaranteed fix. However, if you have literally no other option, obviously ice bath yourself and, you know, ice bath yourself, that's the number one thing. But um, besides that, one of the first things that you can do is to actually go out, go out and try and find dantrolene. Let me find uh, a study on dantrolene for you. Role of dantrolene in dinantrophenol overdose. So 2,4-dinantrophenol. Um, Blah blah blah. Dantrolene interferes with the calcium here. Dantrolene interferes with the calcium release in skeletal muscle and is traditionally used to treat malignant hyperthermia. Hyper hyperthermia is basically what you're going through while you're on DNP. There has been limited published data on its use in DNP toxicity. We present two cases of DNP toxicity that were treated with uh, dantrolene. Case one: 22-year-old uh, male uh, came in overdose with body-willing supplement DNP. He had uh, hyperthermic to 40 degrees Celsius. He required intubation and aggressive cooling. He received multiple doses of dantrolene over the initial 36 hours with the resolution to his hyperthermia extubated and discharged home on hospital day six a second 20 year old male presented following a staggered ingestion of dnp 40.2 degrees celsius required intubation he underwent aggressive cooling and received 200 mg of iv dantrolene his temperature normalized however he expired four hours after ed arrival i believe ed would probably mean emergency i don't know actually what ed would actually mean but yes dantrolene that's the only thing about that we know about dantrolene that may possibly make any difference that's all I can think about so far. Uh, hopefully, it was actually an interesting... This is, in my opinion, one of the most interesting compounds, simply because at some point in time, we will figure out another 
alternative to this compound or chemical that will end up being used so if you know how the original compound works then you, you're going to know how the future compound works in in tandem with this one or something hopefully you guys and girls enjoyed this one if you did please do help me out once again with the like comment share subscribe if you need advice or education on how to run any of these things by yourself if you need the entire um my bloods my logs my studies my search my the list of the supplements and uh the uh, uh the salts that basically i use uh, hit me up in a console and i'll, I'll uh, give you all the information that you need besides that i hope you all enjoyed and i shall see you all next time and finally, if I can help you to create a training program in order for you to gain muscle and not fat, if I can help you to create a diet where you can optimize fat loss and not muscle loss, if I can help you to understand how essential a reverse diet is and set it up for you, or if you're using any SARMs or steroids or any PEDs and you need help with guidance and safety around those, or if you just need to understand what your blood tests actually mean, or if you're trying to navigate life and you want to understand your psychology and other psychology and how can you be more productive and happier in your own life, please feel free to reach out to me. My Instagram and my email are both in the description box below as well as on the video in front of you right now. And finally, if you can help me out, if you know other people that need my help and advice and guidance, but they don't even know that I exist, just let them know about my existence. Finally, if you haven't already, then please help me out with the like, comment, share, subscribe, and I shall see you all next time. Peace.